Hey everyone, Sophia Tong here from Games Radar, and I'm joined by Aram Jabari from Atlas here I to show so us. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy that you're here too, and we're here to check out Game of Thrones. That's right. Let's get started. We're just going to jump. This is the first thing you'll see when you boot up a copy uh, when you pick up the game on May 15th. Oh, I already mentioned year the date. 298, <laughs> Westeros, realm of the Seven Kingdoms. The world has changed. The ancient Targaryen line of kings had its fire extinguished after reigning over the Seven Kingdoms for many centuries. Robert Baratheon's rebellion unified most of the realm's great houses under a single banner, thus bringing about the fall of the Targaryens. Thus, 15 years ago, he acceded to the Iron Throne, becoming Lord of the Seven Kingdoms. Far from the Game of Thrones and political intrigues, far to the north, in the land where winter seems never to die, a border cuts the continent in two, the Wall. The Night's Watch has been its guardian for thousands of years, protecting the realm at all costs from wildling attacks and other menaces from beyond. The danger is constant. The cold is bitter, and death is sweet for those who fall. At times, even the bravest warriors give up and attempt to escape this white purgatory. So that was the voice of Conleth Hill, who plays Lord Varys the Spider uh, in the television adaptation of Game of Thrones for anyone who's watched the, the series on HBO. And right off the bat, I think... For anyone who's a Game of Thrones fan, you realize that this is a video game uh, that is determined to be as authentic as possible and something that uh, fans of the, the show and, of course, the books will, will be able to appreciate. So this is, we're, we're actually, I'm not going to skip uh, any cutscenes. We're going to watch the first um, chunk of gameplay. We'll go through some tutorial stuff. And here we were introduced to uh, Gorald, who is a brother, a sworn brother of the Night's Watch. But he uh, is doing more swearing of the profane sense, I think, as he's running away from his vow. And he's being chased by one of our two protagonists, Moore's Westford. Um, the fact that you play as a couple original characters is something that's been discussed a lot with regards to the game. Fans really, they want to play as Jon Snow. They want to play as... And I should say, anyone who hasn't been reading the books or watching the show, there may be spoilers in this, so, um, you know, please don't, don't pitchfork and throw Molotov cocktails at Atlas headquarters for this. Um, <laughs> But uh, the reason they went with original characters was uh, the developers actually sat down. They, they started this project seven years ago. I knew that you were the one he'd send more. I'll continue in a bit. Damned moment. It had to be you. It's over, old brother. All your attempts are in vain. You know I'll end up taking you to Castle Black, dead or alive. Why not let me get away for old time's sake? After all, we're brothers. You betrayed us by attempting to escape, my friend. My duty is to bring you back. You know there's only one way to leave the Night's Watch. I'm sorry, Moors, you leave me no choice. Oh, shit. So, um, one of the reasons the developers decided, and they sat down with George R. R. Martin, they went to his home, and they actually, George R. R. Martin uh, oversaw the, the conceptualization of the game story. They did not want to, uh, the Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire is a universe, a, a series in which uh, there are a lot of characters who major things happen to. Characters die. Yes. And um, one of the, the challenges of going through uh, Game of Thrones and, and retelling those character stories or letting you play as those characters is that some of them, you know, you're, you're locked into canon. It's like, it's like Star Trek Enterprise. Mm -hmm. You know, why create a series that's just constrained by these boundaries? And, and they didn't want to be constrained by what was there. They wanted to create something that was true to canon, but um, they, they wanted to create, tell an original story that felt authentic. So, We'll get into that a little later. This is uh, the character customization that we see right at the beginning. And we're not customizing our character in terms of their hair color or their eye color. We're focusing on how they play. Mm -hmm. um, you play as Moore's Westford. There's another character, Alistair Sarwick. And every time, that, when, the first time you take control of them, you'll make some key decisions. So the Hedge Knight is, uh, specializes in two-handed weaponry. Uh, we have the Magnar, who's a dual-wield character. 
and the landed knight who is more traditional shield with one hand and I, I'm a big fan of shields you can see that there's a, a main stance for each of these and the interesting thing is that well we'll see that in just a second once we choose our stance we'll be able to apply points similar to uh, Western RPGs and uh, we'll go for a balance of strength luck and excuse me strength agility and endurance here I think would be ideal no intelligence uh, <laughs> you know he's he's more of a fighter not a lover so uh, so this is the, the our stance kind of here based on on the path that we chose and these skill trees or these trees that we have um, not only do they vary based on the stance but also when we get to a certain level we'll be able to either double down on what we've the path we've chosen or we can kind of multi um, multi stance yeah. if you will similar to anyone who's played D&D &D. Okay. so I'm going to go ahead here this is a um, this is an active it's not a passive it's actually a skill uh, unleash a series of strikes we'll go with that um, deride all opponents with your rapier your wit to incite them to attack you. So I don't know. I, I'm not a big fan of those. Um, temporarily increase your damage resistance. I don't know about that. Stun your opponent. Big fan of stunning. <laughs> and small all smash all opponents around you within range of three meters. I I don't really like any ally buffs. I'm a big I can do it myself kind of guy. So those are what we're going to go with. Uh, you can see that there's some stance based modifiers. Again, similar to D&D class based modifiers. So we'll go with some swords. Uh, we'll blunt go weapons. With blunt weapons. There's, so there's tons of different weapons in this uh, items in this game. Equipables. Mm -hmm. And um, once you, uh, I think a lot of people, because this is an adaptation of a, of a book and, and TV property, they don't think that this is an RPG, they think it's RPG light. But no, right. you'll actually find a lot of loot, and you'll be able to equip your character in a lot of different ways. And similar to some of the, the really great RPGs, the, uh, the Black Isle games, or the Troika games, where you know, Ar Arcanum, um, Magica Obscura, I don't know if you played that one, but you, you kind of have the opportunity to gimp, or uh, if, if you give your character an advantage, like Born Leader, for example, you have to cr pick disadvantages and weaknesses that even out to those four points. So you can't, but you can't be the opposite of a, you can't be a born leader and a bad leader, you know, uh, but you could be a, a born leader and witless and clumsy at the same time, yeah. which is an interesting combination, but it makes for a more unique playthrough, and we're, we're not going to disadvantage ourselves in any particular way. I like how allergies is a disadvantage. <laughs> I actually had a taxi driver today who all he could complain about was his allergies. I felt really bad for him. Um, but anyway, so we, we play as two different protagonists in the Game of Thrones video game, and the perspective alternates chapter by chapter. Uh, these are two characters with different origins. Uh, Moore's Westford kind of swore uh, the Castle Black. The oath of the nothing's the, changed. Uh, the Night's Watch. The day we arrived. He willingly took the black. Years. Remember, Moore's? We were so strong back then. At the time, I really believed in the mission of the Night's Watch. You know. You've changed, old brother. I never thought you would betray us. Aye, well, you've always had a knack for choosing friends. One night here, and you'd already bashed in three of our brother's skulls. I wasn't the only one there, if I remember rightly. <laughs> That's me. I never think of the consequences. All I do is give. Look at this, boys. Moss finally brought back that worm, Goro. So anyone who well read done. books, some men bet against you, but I wait. Watch the show. It. You know that it the punishment for hunt. breaking the vow of the Night's Watch is Goro knows how to cover his uh, tracks and his death back penalty. The sword. I've known you for fifteen years, but I still had just a shred of hope that I'd give you and your damn dog the slip. I would have hated getting caught by a little shit like our friend here. Hold your tongue, deserter. That's not what your mother said last night. I'll teach you about respect, dog! Enough! I forbid you to touch him. You would not have had the slightest chance against him, blade in hand. So here you can see Moore's... He, he, uh, something about his character. He's someone who, um, even though he has, he knows that this girl Tell has to be put to death... Tell me, where is that, he has respect for him. The Lord Commander is in front of the Commander's Keep with the new recruits. They've just sworn their oaths. So they are finally sworn brothers of the Night's Watch. Fools. Now, uh, we're just about to meet Lord now Commander... Now you can teach them a little lesson. J. Or Mormon. Right, Mors. Uh, voiced uh, by James Cosmo, the actor who portrays him in the HBO series, and also uh, gave his likeness for the game. So, again, another example of the, uh, the game's links, or the links the game goes to to achieve authenticity. Are there a lot of actors, or is he the only one? Uh, you'll, you'll meet Cersei Lannister, oh, okay. the, the likeness for whom uh, was provided by Lena Headey. Like. And, uh, of course, Conleth Hill varies. You'll meet him as well. I did what I had to, Lord Commander. Your modesty does you honor. Recruits! Hopefully very recognizable. Listen to, to me! Watch the show. 
Moors here is our best tracker. Now that you are sworn brothers of the Night's Watch, he will mold you into rangers. He has just returned from a very delicate mission, tracking down Gorals, who took the cowardly route and deserted. And this is really going to be a lesson the for the Watch, Brothers of the Night's Watch you, uh, to see what happens if you break your vow. They're going to really make a, 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 a point of, of Gorald. And so you have these prompts here, as any RPG does, choices or decisions in, in dialogue. And uh, they have a varying range of effects in Game of Thrones. There are I swore choices that just change how dialogue plays out. If we go back on our word and our mission, there are choices that will have an effect on how the quest I, ends that you're currently on. And mind. there are choices that will have a profound... Uh, effect on Speaking the world and uh, how the game ends. I see so, for example, there's a scenario later with the other protagonist, someone Alistair Sarwick. I'm sorry to talk over the dialogue here, but he basically is dealing with rioting in his city and he, there's a lot of people who he can choose to spare or kill based on the transgressions they've committed. And doing that later in the game, he'll come back to Riverspring, his his kind of, his house, his keep, and, uh, and see the results of his choices. More dead than alive. Damn it. I swear I'll skin the culprit alive. Alas, we do not know if the boy will recognize his assailant, or even if he is to survive. Too bad. The brat certainly was a pretty boy, soft as a virgin. What a pity I never managed to corner him. Shut your trap. What more can you do to me? I'm a dead man anyway. Silence, traitor. Each time I pass judgment on a deserter, I feel the bitterness of failure. It is my duty, as Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, to make true brothers of you. This morning, you were strangers. Now, you have all sworn to honor our oath. Some come to us as knights, carrying out their duties, and some as criminals, forced to choose between the noose and the wall. Once you take the black, your past is dead. You must wash away your former loyalties, forget your family and friends. They cease to exist. Such is the strength of our oath. No life. No children, no lands. All that matters is defending the wall and the realm. We are your only home. We are your duty. We are your new family, the only one that matters now. More than 8,000 years ago, humanity itself was nearly lost during the long night. Our predecessors then built the wall that you see behind us. This massive wall of ice is 700 feet high and divides the continent in half. It protects the realm of the Seven Kingdoms from threats beyond the wall. Defending it is our purpose, our duty. The Night's Watch has unfailingly carried out this mission for centuries, generations after generation. Wildlings, cold, wind, and dishonor. Those are your enemies, even in the midst of a summer such as this one. We have all taken our vows before the gods, whichever gods they are. If you betray your brothers, if you break this sacred oath, Throughout the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros, you will be met with one punishment. Death. Pass the sentence and get this over with. Gold was a brother of the Night's Watch for almost 15 years, but that bears no relevance. He will be executed for desertion. Beyond our mission, we no longer exist. Any last words, deserter?
After all my years spent here, I've forgotten what warmth is. The cold has stolen the very memory. Go ahead and smile at the sight of me, the wretched deserter. But you may do the same one day. You won't be able to take it any longer, and you'll do anything just to live again. I tried my luck, and I failed. You can see here, there come on, no one has to hold them down. There's and do it well. Much like Moore's is the character that that you can see the respect in him and, and uh, the integrity that. Goodbye, that old brother. Even as a Goodbye, deserter, the uh, I'll see you on the other side. These two are kind of cut from a, a certain cloth. Goral just kind of crouches down himself, and it's punishment served out. Yeah. I think he had the same reaction you did. <laughs> it's quite the opening. Yeah, so the the idea here. So we start here at the wall with with Moors. You will and live and you will die. His role here, of, of course, wall. is to kind of wash there away the no summer of these youths that are joining the, the new recruits. Night's watch. Quite the introduction for them. But the, again, the feel, the tone Moors. of the game. Hopefully, for fans of the it, books, poddy. they can see that there's no punches poddy. held. It's incredibly dark and Together mature as it should be. Make sure they smell a little less like summer. Winter We're just about to get into a combat tutorial, right. so you know, hopefully Listen, folks are, are enjoying a chance to see a I full uh, cutscene. Normally, when I when I give a demo like this, we'll skip Let's ahead, but um, establishing the tone of the game, and I guess in a Gather in a game in based yard. on something as as loved as a song of ice and fire, it's important to demonstrate that it's not just that the the tone of uh, of the game is 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 good. It's that it's the tone mirrors or properly reflects the tone that fans would expect um, based on what the property is. Mm -hmm. So. You know, now we have an opportunity to see how the game plays, how you'll explore the world, and we can kind of look around and see the, the wall has really been beautifully recreated in Engine. Um, the, there are a lot of areas that you'll go to that are based on things that fans will be familiar with. For example, you know, here we are at the wall. Castle Black is right here. We can walk in and check that out. There will be some quests that tie to Castle Black. There's characters we can interact with in there. At this point early in the game, the tutorial, there, there won't be much for us to do other than appreciate the effort that went into designing it. Uh, and we'll also go to King's Landing, which is the largest, most elaborate area in the game. Uh, there are a number of things there that are uh, things that... Uh, the, it's important to note the developers started on this project um, well before the HBO show aired. And okay. so a lot of the visualization, the conceptualization of areas, and um, you can see it in the pre-order bonus art book that we're doing at Select Retailers, the concept art is, a com there's a completely different idea for what Iron Castle Black Iron would look like, or the Iron Throne Room in King's Landing. And, you know, here you can see, of course, this is uh, Castle Black. You can walk by folks, they'll be... It's kind of how I pictured it when I was reading the books. Yeah? Obviously, there's uh, vendors who can interact with, and maybe this is a cool opportunity for us to uh, to look at the uh, the interface a bit. Um, for folks who are wondering, there there is a codex um, similar to. Uh, sorry, I was actually meaning to go here. Um, similar to you know, amazing RPGs like the Mass Effect series, of course, chock full of stuff. And here we you know we, we it's not really that fleshed out yet. We haven't encountered all that much stuff. But um, the, the Codex will eventually be populated with mm -hmm. a number of different pages, the lore of A Song of Ice and Fire. And uh, the developers, again, they, they, they built this game based on the, the books. Initially. Initially. Yeah. And, and so it's true to the books. It's true in a lot of ways to the show. It, it really is the best of both worlds. But uh, we also get asked a lot, will we like this if we're not familiar with the series at all? And, and we'll get to the combat in just a second, and I think that'll hopefully answer that question. If you just want to hit things. Yeah, I just... Sophia, I don't know. <laughs> I find, like, the most joy comes out of just hitting hitting things. doesn't matter where you are, really. No. no. Public places, airports. You just, know. Um, Atlas in no way endorses hitting things in airports. <laughs> uh, no violence, even no, though. No There's violence. There's going to be a lot of stabbing coming up soon, uh, I imagine. Yeah, but but one of the questions or one of the comments we see a lot, and here we have a, an autosave. You can see that uh, just about every major transition, there's an autosave to make sure that you're not frustrated by uh, dying. Um, and, and this is set to the easy difficulty right now. There's three different difficulty settings. It's kind of designed for my ability to play and talk at the same time, effectively. <laughs> so, Celtigar, you were as excited as a virgin to see your hero behave Head that poor Gorold, weren't you? Watch your tongue, peasant. Lowborn scum like you often end up the same way. Oh, just listen to him! Still with his milk teeth that he wants to roar. Who knows, you little shit? I may even have been the one to squirt you into your mother's belly. <laughs> There's a lot of mom jokes. 
<laughs> One really more word like that, and I'll send you back to the shit heap where you were born. Silence, Ronit. I'm here to train you. Let's see if your blade is as sharp as your tongue. Very well. I'll show you what I learned in the back alleys of King's Landing. So not a group of more. people that you want to turn your back on. She's your long. tongue, but and then again, that's guard. really the Night's Watch, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So uh, we'll have some tutorial stuff that pops in here. I'm immediately going to go into what we call active slowdown combat. Um, if you've ever played a Bioware RPG, Knights of the Old Republic, uh, Dragon Age One, you'll know that you can kind of stop the action and uh, issue commands. Now, you won't have quite as much party management in Game of Thrones. You will at some point have another uh, party member uh, or companion, and you can uh, issue commands to your, your hound. Uh, and there's something to, to elaborate on regarding the hound in just a bit. But um, So the dog is on your side. Yeah, the dog is on your side. So when you go into this, uh, you can see that there's actually kind of lines of intent. Uh, the hound's line of intent is attacking. You can see that there's actually a, a line from um, Ronit, in this case, two more. So you can see who is attacking who, how the AI is working. You can see all the damage. That's, that's done. And then, of course, we have our, our stance abilities, and this wheel will elaborate and expand upon as you level your character up. Uh, so, for example, here we have an Unleash a Series of Strikes. Let's see how that looks. And then in the upper left-hand corner, you can see um, the, the, the kind of the cue that'll determine when an attack happens. And so, there is a quick series of, uh, of strikes, and then our character goes into normal attacks. We can kind of queue up some manual normal attacks in here. I'm just pressing the A button, and I don't know if that was too fast for folks to, to see. Let me see what you're made We'll have another fight here. Two folks at once. Um, quickly going to slow it down again. Now we have the ability to cycle through easily by pressing the D-pad. And now look again at the uh, the avatar of Moors in the upper left-hand corner in the UI. When I issue a command, let's say I'm going to start by um, doing a, a, a stun attack. Um, or you know what? Let's cancel that ability. You can see up in the upper left, there's the three circles underneath his head, and it kind of shows you you're, you're queuing up your attack. We'll start with the Unleash of Strikes. And then I'm assuming by the time that happens, they're going to be closer. So then we'll try and... Um, stun one of them, and then do a massive strike that hopefully will uh, impact both of them. Uh, not enough energy, so how about we just do a, a normal attack here. It's a series of strikes. See if we can't stun him. And he is stunned now. Now let's see, our energy does slowly regenerate. I think we do have enough here to try to smash. I'm going to try to smash him uh, over here. I'm going to cycle to this guy on the left, and we'll do massive strike and see if we can do that now, and we can. See if we can't get both of them. So you will auto attack if you don't have things queued yes. up. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you'll see the blue indicates that that's kind of an automated attack. Now I should probably focus on the guy who's about to go. <laughs> and our hound is helping us out. Switch over here. Now he's he's not killed. Obviously, this is training. So. Uh, and again, to point out, the green is our health and the yellow is our energy. Uh, and they do both replenish over time. But obviously, in a fight, uh, you're going to have to depend on your strategy. As opposed to the regeneration, it's not really going to happen fast enough. But a very stat-driven. This is a this is a true RPG. It's not an action RPG. At ease. The best comparison by far is the original Dragon Age. Wars. We must speak. I've just returned from the infirmary with some very sad news. Maester Eamon could do nothing to save the boy. He has succumbed to his wounds. They were too grave. I will make the culprit pay. I knew that I could count on you. Before he died, the boy had enough strength to give us the name of his tormentor. He is one of ours. Kragen. Kragen? First Korhold deserts, and now one of our best veterans betrays his vows? You know what I expect from you, Moors. Kragen is leading the Western Patrol. They left this morning. I will leave immediately. Shall I take the new brothers with me to track down Kragen? They may still smell like summer, but I need them to learn how to patrol the wall. On the other hand, you'll have to do without Patrick. The builders need him. All right, Jaw. Kragen certainly is a big fellow. I know. He's almost as good a fighter as you. Do not endanger your new brothers too much. We're too short of men to waste them. If you hurry, you should be able to catch up with them in the ruins of the Icemark Fort. Understood. One final thing. 
I received a raven bearing news that concerns you. A knight in the service of the King's Hand is riding towards Castle Black. He is coming especially to speak to you. I will return from Icemark before he arrives. So be it. May the gods speed you. Listen here, you crows. We meet at the West Gate and leave within the hour. So, you know, we've, we've talked about the combat a bit, and maybe we'll have a, a moment just to quickly go to this Ice Mark area and do one, one fight, um, just so folks can see how the, uh, the, the map navigation works. But uh, we, we've talked a lot about combat, we've talked a lot about the characters that you'll come across, um, but one of the things that we haven't really talked about is the story. And I'll touch on that briefly. Basically, we've just kind of alluded to Moore's path. He's received a, a missive from uh, the hand of the King John Aaron. And uh, you know, later in the game, for those who've, who've read the first book, you'll actually hear reference to the events that occurred to Ned Stark. And so you know, um, you know, this is actually kind of a, a message that came up a little while ago. But essentially, Moore's is tasked to find a girl by the name of Jane. Uh, not much more is told to him. And um, here we, we kind of have the navigation. If you played, um, there's a lot of RPGs use a system like this, an overworld map, maybe a Neverwinter Nights 2, if you're familiar with that one. Uh, and kind of we have the ability to see there's tons of areas that have yet to unlock, but uh, that was a little quick sneak peek. And let's go ahead and go to Ice Mark. It'll be a little load, and we should be there. Um, but uh, Alistair Sharwick, he is the, uh, he's returns to his homeland of uh, or River Spring. And uh, there his family rules, it's House Starwick that kind of run, they rule over River Spring. But his father, he received a notice that his father was passing. And uh, he returns from self-imposed exile from, uh, for 15 years. He went off and he became a red priest of R'hllor. So uh, there are some slight supernatural aspects to Song of Ice and Fire in the game. Yeah. You know, the developers have talked about how they know that magic is not really that big in Game of Thrones. It's more about it's more real <sighs> medieval gritty yeah. fantasy, mm -hmm. and so the is combat is based on stances as opposed to magic spells. I'm so cold. Uh, and here again, this we can see uh, how how you know lovely and, or how beautifully anymore. and awe-inspiringly the uh, the wall has been rendered at least um, for anyone who this kind of thought to stand beneath ever. it and what it would be like. <laughs> Um, and so we're going to get into a quick fight here, and I'll continue to talk. Keeps you awake, and walking keeps you warm. So, um, here we go. Let's just go with normal attacks. Uh, and so Alistair Sarwick is uh, eventually uh, faced with riots in River Spring as his father passes and things kind of fall into disarray. And eventually he makes his way to King's Landing and the Iron Throne, and he meets Cersei Lannister. Uh, and, and she commands him after a quest or two to find this girl Jane as well. So we have these two protagonists who this are from different sign. different paths, and they're kind of they the, the player realizes early on set on um, a bit of a collision course. And so close to Jane is a, a central character to the game, and her Craigan's patrol. Her uh, her existence or the, the nature of her character is really at the heart and soul of the game. Should be here already. We need to find out more. So, you know, let's let's finish off maybe. I want to just look at the inventory real quick, and I know that's the, the craziest way to end a demo um, <laughs> as opposed to more. But I, I want really people to understand that this is an RPG through and through. So we just picked up a new weapon, Wildling Blade. Uh, let's go ahead and we can compare that really easily. The interface has been designed with um, thought for an RPG gamer. We can easily compare it to what we have. It's better. Let's go ahead and swap it. We also have the ability to create an alternate configuration. So uh, if you've ever played Diablo, you know that you can just press, I think it's the Q or W key, and you just cycle between your uh, your two weapon configurations. So if I return here... There are I, only four of us! Uh, we can see can here more of them? Uh, the left analog brave, cycles between. So we have our just our sword, Night's and Watch. then we have our sword and shield. So that's pretty convenient. Got it. Uh, we also have a number of other tabs, and, and there's no capacity, there's no weight limit, so you can continue to collect items. That's one of those frustrations. Really it. <laughs> yeah, it works in some games, and I think in some games it's just a bit of an annoyance, so it's nice where you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you have your belt, items you can use in combat, flasks that can be collected and filled at potions merchants. Some of these can be uh, tossable weapons in battle. Uh, you also have armor, different kinds of armor. You can see it easily it indicates what item is equipped, and then if we had other pieces we could, just like the weapons, compared to what we have equipped. Jewels, so these are, again, to cite another title, Diablo Charms in Diablo, for example, you just have them in your inventory, um, or in this case, it's equipped, the, the, the ring. 4% um, uh, damage, mm -hmm. plus 4% damage is really helpful. And uh, quest objects, so that's any good RPG worth of salt would have those. <laughs> and um, You wanted a 
folks, folks have asked about, you know, quests. Are there quests? I mean, people really wonder, is this a, a true RPG? And, and yeah, definitely uh, it is. You have a, a quest log. It kind of gives you extensive summary of what to do next and uh, side objectives. There are side quests. There are mini quests. Um, so I talked a little bit about the Hound. And maybe we have time for Let's do one more quick fight, and then we'll, we'll call it uh, a demo. So then for the story, um, were the developers the one primarily writing, um, we don't know how many there directing are. where that would go? Well, so yeah, so what no, happened was the developers less. sat down with George R. R. Martin. They went to his home on a number of occasions, and um, they they came up with the the, the seed that, that that inspired. Yeah, a lot of the writing, a lot of the idea of where it went was was um, written by the developers, but they did so with the. Um, it is so in conjunction with, or the, you know, he was overseeing, George Martin was overseeing what was being done. Got it. And so they didn't want to do anything that was against the spirit, his intention or his spirit for the for the series. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, I think what you have is, is a very grounded, authentic s story within the A Song of Ice and Fire universe. Um... But it's also very, it's, it's new. It's, it's kind of like a, we think of it as a new chapter, a new book in the series that, that you can discover. Uh, it, it doesn't try to break, it doesn't break canon. Uh, what it does is it tries to inhabit that world. Uh, similar maybe, I think the Lord of the Rings Third Age was a game where they, you don't play as Gandalf, you don't play as Aragorn, you, play, you create your own character. And the idea is that you get to feel like you're part of that world without having to break some of the world's rules. Um... And uh, here, here we're gonna find uh, Cregan, and you know maybe we, maybe we won't even get to that part. We'll, we'll kind of <laughs> just spoilers. call it a demo. But yeah, um, so the Game of Thrones RPG. Uh, hopefully, fans of what they've seen, they've liked. Um, maybe we should talk. Should I talk about platforms and? Yes. Who? When is the game coming out, and on what platform? Uh, so the Game of Thrones video game is going to be out May 15th for Xbox 360, PS3, and uh, digitally. Uh, digitally is silly because it's all digital. It's ones and zeros. Uh, <laughs> downloadably for PC. And I will also say that if you pre-order at uh, GameStop or Amazon in the U.S. or Canada or the HBO shop, you can get a hardbound 64-page full-color art book as a free gift with purchase pre-order bonus. Um, and there's all this cool concept art in there that is kind of renders of um, areas that the developers, you know, the, the developers, they um, they had to come up with what the Iron Throne Room looked like before it was ever conceptualized on the small screen. And so you can see that kind of stuff and how they envisioned the Iron Throne. It's it's a lot of cool stuff. And fans of A Song of Ice and Fire, even just the books alone, will we'll get a kick out of it. So pre-order. Well, thank you so much for stopping by and showing us the game. Thank you so much for having me. And that was our look at the Game of Thrones video game. And be sure to come back on GamesRadar.com for our ongoing video games coverage. Crossing the bridge. Get out of here. <coughs>